Hey, Volley Truthers. In this episode, I am talking about two styles of coaching, Socratic versus didactic, instructional method of coaching. Let's get into it, shall we? The teacher in me has to define each of these methods to ensure that we are all on the same page. The Socratic method. will challenge the player by asking questions about what they did, the rhyme or reason behind a particular choice and question the outcome to see if the player can figure out if there was a better plan of action. The didactic method is where the coach instructs the player and the player performs the task. The truth is, I never knew that that styles of coaching had names. If y'all have been following me, you know that I am a lifelong learner. Volleyball is just my mode of learning transportation. So I was reading the book, Championship Behaviors by Hugh McCutcheon, which you can find a quick link for the book in the description box below or at my website, orderonthevpcourt.com. Anyways, bettering myself as a coach is always a priority. So when I came across these two methods, of course I did my own research and I think I'm a good mix of both. There's no name for a combination of the two. So if any of you out there come up with one, please let me know. Maybe sordactic. That sounds like a good one to me. If I had to evaluate myself, I'd say the following. One, it's a must for me to have a practice plan. It doesn't have to be visible at this stage of my coaching career, but I must have it. But y'all, I love need and want it visible all the time. And I absolutely encourage you to do the same. Shout out to Dynasty Volleyball Club in Kansas City for always having a whiteboard screwed to the walls by every single court so that it was easily accessible to all involved. I always want my players to know what they can expect from each and every session. Heck, to be honest, I want the parents to know too, they might as well, they're there. Number two, I discuss what the practice focus will be. Number three, I lay out all expectations. Four, I give blocks of instruction with demonstrations before each drill or game-like simulation and ask for questions to ensure that all are understanding. Now, after I have given the blocks of instructions, performed the tasks, and made corrections, adjustments individually and whole team, I go into, I question player response mode during the activity. I have always felt that this allows players to analyze why they did what they did or even what happens when they do that particular action. We discuss how to make it better, stronger, smarter, or faster for the player and for the team. These short on the spot corrections, discussions, or conversations can happen with multiple players throughout the entire practice or even afterwards. I find that players take more ownership of their learning and their mistakes, especially if these are reoccurring mishaps. It also allows me as the coach to dig deeper to see where the player's mindsets might be and oftentimes access where the blocky is, why it's there, how to help them overcome it and become more successful in doing so. I also tend to give brief insight on what comes in the upcoming practice. I even send out summaries about the practice just to keep them abreast of the process itself. There is a common request that keeps coming up as I coach players. Players want coaches to let them know the mistakes they make, but they also want to know how to correct those mistakes. I make it a point to coach players, especially younger players, as if they are coming to me with, well, a clean slate. So when coaches go in with the assumption that these young players already know how to play, they are more disappointed when they realize just how much 
they have to teach. Coaches can also see what the player knows or what the player can do and then, you know, tweak where needed. Always explaining the logic behind the adjustments. The absolute worst thing a coach can do is to tell a player that they are doing a concept wrong, but don't tell them how to correct it or tell them to figure it out. I mean, there's no other more helpless feeling than that. Now, I will say that players you do need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's definitely something to say when a group of players and parents buy into what I like to call the method to my madness. To wrap this up, this is not to say that this is the end of my volleyball educational journey because I am again a lifelong learner of this sport. So to my volleyball players, parents, and coaches out there, continue to live, learn, and love the game. Y'all, it's rough out here in these volleyball streets. So until next time, remember, play like you're going to be subbed out. That's all for now. But if you like the content, leave a comment below, spike the like button, and subscribe to my channel.